Hello, in this video I'm going to take you through percentage yield calculations which fall into Unit 3 of the Higher Chemistry course. So ideally by the end of this video you will be able to state the definition of percentage yield. Um, you're never really usually asked for this, this is just to create some kind of understanding as to what you're doing the calculation for and then uh, show you how to actually calculate a percentage yield for a specific product in a given chemical reaction. So all the percentage yield is, is specifically what it says, is the percentage of product that you get when you compare it to how much you could get in an ideal world if all of the reactants were converted into products. So most uh, chemical reactions that happen in industry, especially within like in drug production, like medicine production, or a lot of organic carbon-based chemistry, a lot of those reactions are reversible. So we tend not to really get 100% product yields. Um, so you wouldn't manage to convert all of your reactants into say paracetamol. Um, so percentage yield is important to take into consideration when you're making up a chemical process because if the percentage yield is really low, it's gonna be quite a costly reaction for you to run. Um, because the only thing you're going to make a profit off of is your product that you're trying to sell. So if you're making a very low amount of it, you're going to have to buy in a lot of reactants and then you don't have much of your product to sell. Um, there are ways you can try and improve the eco economy of the reaction if it's got a low percentage yield and there will be some reactions that still get done with a tiny percentage yield just because they're essential enough. Um, but ideally, the higher percentage yield you can get from your reaction, the better, obviously, because then that will ma maximize your product and minimize any wastage, which also helps with the environmental impact, et cetera. So the equation we use for calculating percentage yield is the one that's down here in this V box. So it's the actual yield. So that's how much you actually make when you run the reaction. Um, and then that's divided by the theoretical yield, which is how much you could make if the yield was 100%. So in order to work out the theoretical yield, it's very similar to doing a calculation from equation um, like you would have done in National 5. So we use the uh, mole ratio from the balanced equation to work out how much product we could make in an ideal world if everything was getting converted. And then to express that fraction as a percentage, we times it by 100. Okay. So we go through an example. This should hopefully clear things up. To do these, you will need um, page five of your data booklet with all the relative atomic masses and also a calculator. Sometimes in the assessments, you're given um, the gram formula mass of the substances already, which helps so you don't tend to need your data booklet for the relative atomic masses, but we're gonna do it the long way today, just so you get a full understanding of how the percentage yield calculation works. So, as you read through the question, what you want to do is identify the substances it's talking about, and there will usually only be two uh, that you have to take into consideration. So this question is asking us to calculate the percentage yield of titanium. So then I would look for titanium, so that's here. So I'm gonna put a question mark above that so that I remember that that's what I'm trying to calculate the percentage yield of. And then it says where 260 grams of titanium Four chloride. So this is titanium four chloride here. So we've got 260 grams of that. It produced 48.5 grams of titanium. So this number here is our actual yield. Okay, that's how much titanium was actually produced. What we had to do first before we can use the percentage yield equation is work out our theoretical yield. So basically every percentage yield calculation starts with working out a theory, theoretical yield. So even if you just do that bit, you can pick up some of the marks. So there are a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, you can do it by a direct proportion, which I'm gonna show you first. And then you can also do it by uh, calculating the number of moles, which I'll also show you in this example. But then for the rest of the examples, I'll probably just do it by direct proportion. So um, if we take the balanced equation, one mole, of titanium, I'll write the formulas in so you don't get confused, of a uh, titanium chloride should produce one mole of titanium in an ideal world. 
Okay, so then because we're dealing with masses, we need to convert the moles into a mass. So we need to work out the gram formula mass of titanium chloride. So titanium chloride, right over here where I've got space. So that's one mole of titanium. So that's 47.9. And then four moles of chloride or chlorine atoms, which is 35.5. So if you were to add that up, uh, 47.9 plus 4 times 35.5, uh, that's 189.9 grams. Okay, so 189.9 grams of titanium chloride should give us one mole of titanium, which is that 47.9 grams. Okay. We don't have 189.9 grams, though we have 260. So we find one gram first. So 47.9 over 189.9. And then we scale up to the amount, oops, wrong number, scale up to the amount we've actually got, which is 260. So that's 47.9 over 189.9 times 260. So you put all that into your calculator. That's 65.58 grams. So that is our theoretical yield. So that's how much we would make in an ideal world. Okay, so the theoretical yield you calculate from the balanced equation. So now we have our actual yield, we have our theoretical yield, so we can use the percentage yield equation. So the percentage yield is actual over the theoretical times 100. So that's 48.5 over 65.58 times by 100. So that into your calculators. That gives us a yield of 70. 3.96%. So you could round that to 74% if you want to. I like to do two decimal places just as a personal preference. Okay, so that's the percentage yield. If you end up with a percent yield over 100%, you've done something wrong or you're a wizard because it's not really possible. Um, so every percentage yield should be maximum 100%. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to show you the way you can work out the theoretical yield via calculate minimum moles now. So we can work out the moles of titanium chloride we've got using the NMGFM relationship. So the mass we have is 260 grams. The gram formula mass is 189.9 grams. So the number of moles would be M over GFM, which in this case will be 260 over 189.9. So put that into your calculator. That's 1.37 moles, round it. You can keep it as 369, keep it as 369 moles. Okay, now then we look at mole ratio. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio, which means we will have the same number, make the same number of moles of titanium. So we're trying to work out the theoretical mass we could make. The gram formula mass of titanium is 47.9 grams. So to work out how much we could theoretically make um, is N times GFM. So if you do 1.369 times by 47.9. That gives us the same theoretical yield as before, 65.58 grams. Okay, so then using the percentage yield equation is exactly the same, regardless of how you calculate the theoretical yield. So it's actual over the theoretical times by 100. Don't forget the times by 100, but I sometimes forget to write that down. So our actual yield was this 48.5. The theoretical is our 65.58 and times that by 100. 
you should get the same percentage yield as before. Seventy three point nine six percent. Okay, so it's exactly the same, it's just a different method for calculating the theoretical yield. So for the rest of the examples, I'll just do it by the direct proportion way, which was the first way I did it, but you're free to do it whichever way you want for your own calculations. So the next example, I've got a different reaction here. So same process, read through the question, pick out any key chemicals and identify them in the reaction below. So calculate the percentage yield of sulfur dioxide. So sulfur dioxide is here. So that's our question mark compound. Uh, in the reaction, we're five grams of zinc sulfide. So this is our zinc sulfide here. So we've got five grams of that. And five grams of that produced 2.8 grams of sulfur dioxide. So that's our actual yield. We need to start off by calculating the theoretical. So we've got this time two moles of zinc sulfide producing two moles of sulfur dioxide, which you can just simplify to one mole and one mole. You don't have to, but just saves you unnecessarily multiplying, so you can simplify any mole ratios if, you, if it's possible. So we convert moles to mass. So zinc sulfide, uh, zinc is 65.4, the sulfur, is 32.1, so if you add that together, 65.4 plus, sorry, 32.1, big fingers this morning, Just pressing all the wrong buttons, 97.5. Okay, so 97.5 grams of zinc sulfide would give us so the sulfur dioxide, that's two times 16 for the oxygens. And then for the sulfur, it's 32.1. So if I add that up, 64.1. Okay, so then that 97.5 grams would produce 64.1 grams of sulfur dioxide. But we don't have 97.5 grams in there five grams, so we find what one gram would give us, so 64.1 over 97.5, and then we scale up to the five grams, so 64.1 over 97.5 times by five. So we'll pop that into your calculator. That means that we should produce, in an ideal world, 3.29 grams. Okay, if we didn't produce that, we only produced 2.8. So now we can use our percentage yield equation. So actual over theoretical times by 100. So that's 2.8 over 3.29 times by 100. It's always comforting when the top number is smaller than the bottom because then you know that you've not got ended up with a yield over 100%. So that comes out as 85.1%. Okay, and again, you can calculate the theoretical yield by the mole relationship if you wish instead. So then this is our last example. So calculate the percent yield of ethene here in the following reaction where 28 grams of decane produces 3.3 grams of ethene. So that's our actual. So we start off working out the theoretical. So this time we've got one mole of decane producing one mole of ethene. So that means for the gram formula mass of that, that's 10 times 12 for the carbons, 22 times 1 for the hydrogens. If we were to add that up, 120 plus 22, 142 grams. So that's 142 
grams producing ethene, which is two times 12 and four times one. So that'd be 24 plus four, 28 grams. So mass there. If there was more than one mole, then you would just multiply that gram formula mass by two. So say you were making two moles of methane, it would then be two times 28 for the mass to move, or the moles to mass um, swap. So then one gram would give us 28 over 142, and we've got 28 grams. So 28 grams would give us 28 over 142 times 28. 28. 28 divided by 142 times by 28, 5.52 grams. Okay, so that's our theoretical yield. So then for our percentage yield equation, actual over theoretical times 100. So that's 3.3 over 5.52 times by 100, which gives us a percentage yield of 59.78%. Okay, so hopefully those few examples give you a clear idea of how to carry out percentage yield calculation. Um, so hopefully now you have an idea of what percentage yield actually means and you can calculate the percentage yield for a specified product in a given chemical reaction. Thank you.